Do you work or study? I'm a physics major. I'm in my second year of economics. I've just graduated. I was studying finance. I'm doing a master's in ethical hacking. I've just changed my degree. I was studying politics, but now I'm taking acting lessons. I'm studying accounting. I wanted to be an artist, but my parents said that I have to be an accountant. I'm a high school student. I'm waiting to hear whether I've been accepted to my PhD program. I study psychology, biology, law, English, business management, nursing, engineering, education, politics, history, art, design. I'm studying for IELTS. So, do you work or study? In the last lesson, I made a video for how to answer this common question for workers. Now, in this lesson, we'll be looking at how to answer this question for students. And stick around, students, because we'll also be looking at how to answer some other tricky part one questions related to your studies. Let's get into it. So when we have to answer the question, do you work or study, we can use certain sentence structures. Things like, I study, and then the subject. So, I study maths, or if you're in America, I study math. We could also say, I'm a physics major, or I'm a chemistry major. We could also say, I'm in my second year of history, or I'm doing a master's, PhD, in political science. We could also say, I've just graduated with a degree in history or physical education. So that means you've graduated and you're no longer studying. Now, if this is you and you've just finished studying and maybe you're doing the IELTS to apply for another course and you have this answer, you say, I've just graduated, the examiner is most likely going to ask you about what you studied before. So be ready to answer questions about the degree or course that you have just finished. Now, this is a relatively straightforward question. Do you work or study? However, the next question that the examiner is likely to ask you gets a little bit more tricky. How would you answer this? Why did you choose this subject? Now, this might seem like an easy question, but what I've found is whenever I ask my students this question, they tend to get a bit hesitant and repeat themselves. So what I suggest is you learn your answer for this common question. And to help you with that, let's have a look at a model answer for this question. Why did you choose this subject? I chose physics because I like to learn about how the world works. I was good at maths in high school, but chose to study physics as I wanted to study a subject with more theory and experimentation. Okay then, so he was studying physics. He said, I chose physics because I like to learn about how the world works. I was good at maths in high school, but decided to study physics as I wanted to study a subject with more theory and experimentation. Now, we can use this answer as a framework for developing our own answers. For example, we could say, I chose chemistry because I like to learn about how chemicals are formed and put together. I was good at science in high school, but decided to study chemistry as I wanted to study a subject with more lab time and experiments. Okay, so let's have a look now at another model answer for a different subject. Why did you choose this subject? It was originally a toss-up between economics and politics. But in the end, I went with economics as I figured I would increase my chances of getting a high salary in the future. Okay then, so this time they were studying economics. They said it was originally a toss-up between economics and politics. Now, if you say something is a toss-up, you're saying that it's a 50-50 decision between two things. So toss-up is an idiom that comes from when you have a coin and you flip the coin and then you look to see if it's heads or tails. 
That's a toss-up. And we can use this when we're making a decision between two different alternatives. So it was originally a toss-up between economics and politics. Then they go on to say, but in the end, I went with economics as I figured it would increase my chances of getting a high salary in the future. Okay, so figured here is the same as saying think. So I thought it would increase my chances of getting a high salary in the future. Now again, we can use this as a framework for developing our own answers. And when I say a framework for developing our own answers, this isn't something that you should copy and memorize and uh, regurgitate in your IELTS speaking test. This is something that you should use when you're preparing your answers to make sure that you're fully prepared for these common questions in IELTS speaking. Let's have a look at another one. Why did you choose this subject? Well, to be honest, I didn't know what I wanted to study. However, my parents were adamant that I study finance. A lot of people in my country think that studying finance will help you to get a steady job in the future. Okay, so at this time they're studying finance. They said, well, to be honest, I didn't know what I wanted to study. However, my parents were adamant that I study finance. So adamant here is a very useful word. It means very certain and not willing to listen to other ideas. So my parents were adamant that I study finance. My guess is that this is a very useful word for one of two of you out there that have very strict parents that are very adamant that you study a certain subject, usually medicine, accounting, or finance. So my parents were adamant that I study finance. A lot of people in my country think that studying finance will help you to get a steady job in the future, which is usually the case. It's usually true. Finance is a very good degree if you want to have a steady job in the future. Now, steady job just means a secure job, a job that gives you a good income and you're going to always be needed, as is the case with finance. Again, we can use this as a framework for developing our own answers. And we have some more coming. Let's have a look at this one. Why did you choose this subject? Well, I've been interested in history ever since I was a child. When I was in primary school, I had to do a project on ancient Rome. I loved reading about what life was like in past civilizations, and that just triggered my love for history. Okay then, so this student studied history. They said, well, I've been interested in history ever since I was a child. When I was in primary school, I had to do a project on ancient Rome. I loved reading about what life was like in past civilizations, and that just triggered my love for history. Right, so triggered here is an idiomatic phrase that means it caused something else. So in this case, the student had to do a project on ancient Rome, and that triggered their love for history. So trigger is the word for the part of a gun that you pull here. So you pull the trigger and then the gun explodes and fires a bullet. So if something triggers something else, it means it causes something else to happen. All right, again, we can use this as one of our frameworks. We could say, well, I've been interested in mathematics ever since I was a child. When I was in primary school, I had to do a homework assignment on Pythagoras. I loved reading about the theory and that just triggered my love for maths, for example. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Why did you choose this subject? I chose psychology because I'm interested in how the mind works. There are so many fascinating studies that shed light on why we feel the way we feel or why we react in a certain way. My older sister also studied psychology and she would always tell me about how fascinating her lectures were. It was really a no-brainer. Right, so this student studied psychology. They said, I chose psychology because I'm interested in how the mind works. There are so many fascinating studies that shed light on why we feel the way we feel or why we react in a certain way. 
My older sister also studied psychology and she would always tell me about how fascinating her lectures were. It was really a no-brainer. Right, so no-brainer means a very easy decision to make. In fact, it's such an easy decision to make that it doesn't involve any thinking or any brain power. It's an automatic decision, an obvious decision. Okay, so we can use this as a framework for our answers. So, so far we've looked at, do you work or study? Why did you choose this subject? Now, the next question we're going to look at is this. Is there anything you don't like about your studies? Now, again, this might seem like a simple question, but on the spot, it's actually quite difficult to answer. So I recommend that you take the time now before your IELTS speaking test to prepare and practice your answer. And here are some ideas for what you could say. So this question is basically asking about what you don't like about your studies. Do you have any complaints, for example? Well, if you have complaints about your university, you might want to say something like this. My university is in the middle of nowhere. So that means that your university has a very bad location and it's far out, maybe in the outskirts, away from the city centre. You could say, the food in the school cafeteria is almost inedible. So inedible means um, when something tastes so bad that you can't even eat it. Okay, the tuition fees are extortionate. So extortionate is a very useful word for meaning very, very, very expensive. So the tuition fees are extortionate. Maybe your complaint is that a lot of the equipment is outdated, meaning old-fashioned. Or many of the buildings are falling apart, which means they're old and not in good condition. Okay, so you might have some complaints about the university. You might also have some complaints about the teachers. Things like, the teachers are all over the shop, which means they are very disorganised. You could say, the teachers have clear favourites. Maybe they like these students, but they don't like those students. Maybe they always pick these students, but they don't always pick those students. They have clear favourites. You could say, we get given an unreasonable workload. So maybe you always have homework or copious amounts of books to read for the next lecture. The teachers have old-fashioned teaching methods. So maybe they try and teach you by rote or the lessons aren't very interactive. You could also say, the lessons are rather monotonous. So monotonous basically means when it's always the same. There's no diversity or change. The lessons are monotonous. Now, apart from complaining about the teachers, you might want to complain about the other students, the peers in your university. Things like, many of my peers aren't motivated, or I wish my peers were smarter. Many of my peers are lazy and just try to freeload off those of us who put in the effort. So if they try to freeload, it means they don't put in any effort and they just try and take the reward for the work that other students do. I remember when I went to university, there were certainly a lot of students that tried to freeload off the other students that put in the effort. You might also want to say many of the other students don't take their work seriously, which is kind of similar. It means they're not putting in effort into their work. The next question that's very common when you're talking about your studies is this. What do you intend to do after you finish studying? So for some people, this is very easy to answer. They've got a clear mm, idea of what they want to do after they finish studying. However, for other students, it's not so clear. And well, this is gonna help those students that don't have it so clear to think about what they could say. Here are some model answers. What do you intend to do after you finish studying? I don't ever intend to finish studying. After I graduate from my bachelor's, I'll apply for a master's or even a PhD directly. After that, I'll probably become a professor and continue my research in the university. 
My plan is to work for a famous hedge fund and become as rich as humanly possible. I really have no idea. Ideally, nothing to do with finance. I've promised my parents I'll graduate, but after that I want nothing to do with finance ever again. I'd like to move into politics. Studying history has given me a newfound respect for our political system. After I graduate, I'm going to join the left-wing party in my country and volunteer for one of their think tanks. Right then, so we've looked at do you work or study? And we've looked at why did you choose this subject? Is there anything you don't like about your studies? And what do you intend to do after you finish studying? Now, the important thing is now it's time for you to look at these questions and think about what you would say if you're in an IELTS speaking test and the examiner asks you these questions. Again, don't necessarily um, memorize your answers for these questions, but a good idea is to write down your answers just so that you've already thought about what you could say when it comes to doing your speaking test. And when you're writing down your answers, you may well find that you need to look up certain words or you might be unsure about how to express a certain idea. It's better to do that in writing at home in your own time rather than having those same dilemmas and problems when you're trying to express your ideas in the IELTS speaking test. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did then please give it a like, subscribe to the channel and even hit the bell button to always be notified of future videos from English Pro Tips. Again, if you really enjoyed this video, then consider looking at my all of my IELTS courses. So I have, for example, a vocabulary course, I have a reading course, a listening course, a speaking course, and a very popular writing course. And I'll put the link to all of those in the description below this video. Okay, best of luck with your studies, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye then.